All right, the last step, the third and final step here of finding your full stroke is I want you to feel that same rebound that we're getting this way off of the actual drum. So right now I'm going to use a molar stroke because I get a lot of power from a molar stroke. So I'm going to start low down. I'm going to do a whip stroke. Now if you see there, I controlled it. I stopped the rebound. This time I'm going to accept it. I'm going to let that stick come flying back by opening my fingers. The fulcrum hasn't changed. The fulcrum stayed very relaxed. So I do that and the stick comes flying back into this position. Notice it, it rests completely parallel to my index finger and comes right into this little horseshoe shaped spot, the valley in between my thumb and my index, and it just comes right back there. Now I've been practicing this, so you're going to get that same feeling. You also notice that the stick goes back off into my right shoulder, not towards my face, because then my form would be weird. So I want to keep the stick in line with my hands. In this case, it's going to go out that way, not this way. So don't line up with your eyes, line up with your hands. Now again, this is my way of feeling it. <laughs> if your teacher taught you something different, every teacher has a different spin on this. This is what just made sense to me when I was practicing it and certain teachers that brought it to my attention back in the day. Very good. So once you've done this and you've practiced this a lot, you can feel that rebound and accept it. The next thing I want you to try to do is actually catch that rebound in this full position. So you're going to come around and try to bring your hand up. Now notice I took me a second to find it. The stick's coming back so fast that I'm trying to actually catch it and come back to that position. You see? Now I don't care if it looks bad. <laughs> Eventually you'll practice and it'll get like that. Always start low, whip it, catch it. Now if you do it right, your thumb should be right on that stick. It shouldn't be off the stick. It shouldn't be falling to the side. It should be right on the side just like that. There we go. That way your fulcrum is intact and you're catching that stick. That's how you start learning how to accept the rebound. Once you understand this and you've done it a whole bunch of times, the last step is to really start from the full position, come straight down, and let the stick rebound with that same feeling. So you get full strokes that happen over and over again. Now those of you that are part of the Drummer's Almanac that are in the membership and practice with me every single day, know that we start every practice session with full strokes. The reason for that is I want you all to be aware of the 50-50 motion that comes from full strokes. By practicing these, you learn how to shut off half of your muscles. Now when I was in school, I had a great teacher tell me, I don't know how true this is physically or with the body or whatever, but he told me that it takes nine muscles in your wrist to push the stick down. Now, for those of you doctors out there, I don't know if that's exactly right, but that's what he told me. So that's how we're going to go about it. Nine muscles to bring the stick down. He said there's another nine muscles on the other side of your wrist that are going to pull to bring the stick up. So altogether, that's 18 muscles to come down and up. By implementing a full stroke, you're using nine to come down. The stick comes up by itself, zero pulling. You're catching. Therefore, you're cutting an 18 muscle motion into a nine muscle motion, cutting everything in half. That's a huge savings in terms of your energy. So learning how to do this on a consistent basis eventually will open your hands up to the point where the stick is always rebounding. It's always coming off of your hands. And we call this playing out of the drum because the rebound is taking you the other 50% of the motion. Very, very important thing to practice. Uh, in fact, I could even tell you a quick little story. A teacher of mine in high school had the opportunity of meeting Buddy Rich uh, very briefly <laughs> after a show, and he had the opportunity to ask Buddy a question. Uh, now, Buddy's not known to be a teacher. Buddy was not known to really give much advice in terms of drumming to other drummers, but I guess he felt bad for my teacher who was then a, a kid, and my teacher had asked him to show him something. So Buddy replied, I'm going to show you something, and I'm only going to show it to you once, one time. It's up to you to figure out why it's important. Now the exercise he showed him was that. And he did it once, and that was it. And he said, now go home and uh, figure out why that's important. Now my teacher at the time just thought Buddy was being kind of a jerk. In actuality, he was showing him probably the most important thing that you could learn on the drums. When my teacher went back to his teacher at the time and explained this story to him, his teacher had said to him, well, actually, there's a reason Buddy showed you that, and 
brought him into the full strokes. So that's how it was explained to me in terms of the importance of practicing this exercise. And I want to instill that in you to go ahead and think about it this way and practice this exercise. Take a lot of care in getting it right because this is going right back to your touch, your feel, your form, everything that really is going to come back to your playing and make you feel and sound great directly relates to the full stroke. So I really want you to understand it, work on it, practice it. So thanks so much for checking out my lesson on the full stroke. Uh, I hope it's nice and clear. Feel free to uh, get, reach out to us, get in touch, let us know if we can help you in any way with getting this stuff together. As I mentioned, the Drummer's Almanac, we do this every single day because it's that important, something you really want to condition. I also build it into our exercises. So in addition to just practicing this on your own, you want to find compound exercises in your practice that incorporate this feeling so you always get the repetition. Also think about it when you're just playing with a band, how often you're going to be using that full stroke, whether you're playing a groove, fills, whatever. It's such an important feeling. I can't stress it enough. So I hope you guys had a great lesson. Thanks for checking it out, and I'll see you guys on the next one.